What is going on, everybody? Jumbo Thick here, back with more Warhammer Fantasy Roleplay, our Rise of the Forsaken 4th Edition campaign. I am once again joined by our normal cast and crew for a bit of a special event of sorts, um, which you guys will be hearing more about in the coming days. So, we are joined by Mr. Jumbo Smooth, Mr. Doobie209, and Mr. Pierce Galactic. If you guys care to introduce yourselves. Hello everyone, I am Jumbo Smooth. I'll be playing the role of Marius Wolf this evening. Uh, we are currently facing a uh, demon monster. Just ate a dwarf. And it looked like it might explode. We're trapped in a room. <laughs> uh, could, could be could be fun. Could be fun. You know? Could be. Mm. It could be. Doobie? Uh, what's going on? Hey everybody, Doobie 209 here. James McGreedy, and I just want to want to you know recognize people that commented on those last two videos. There's a lot of comments, a lot of good comments, and I'm trying to do better about going through and involving myself <laughs> in the comments, liking them, responding to some. It's nice to see because we've been doing this for quite some time, and people are sticking around with it. So, mm -hmm. indeed, we're indeed, the long, longest running Warhammer on uh, YouTube. It's very true. Mr. Galactic. Well, that was hard to, to follow Doobie there. Um, this is Pierce Galactic, playing the part of Bragadin Bano. You also may know him as Bragadin the Bold or Bragadin oh. the Brave. Oh, after man. last session. Mm. I don't know. He's got some big steel balls right now. Mm -hmm, he's, uh, mm -hmm. he's pretty proud he stood up there. Mm -hmm. But um, right now, he's a little concerned because there's... Uh, I don't know exactly what it is, but it's some kind of metal volcano machine that is that's that's blocking the exit. That's that's all I know at this time. That's it. <laughs> well, with that, let's just hop right in, guys. Let's get into this. So, last we left off, our crew, our unfortunate fellowship, had found themselves in the long lost hold of Carrick Zorn. You found a bit of a guide, Mr. Drogor Zardum, who you liberated from a cell. Managed to rescue one Bragadine Beno, not just from Skaven and a death tunnel, and also some spiders, but managed to get your way all the way to what Mr. Drogor has petitioned you in procuring an item for himself. Something that he claims led the hold to ruin. And he needs to do something with said item. Um, he led you to a somewhat what he told you of as a vault. Which turns out to be something much, much different. Possibly a tomb of sorts. Upon entry to said tomb, Seamus was struck with a... Uh, Wave of nausea, wave of exhaustion of a kind, as he triggered some kind of trap-like mechanism. Some runes that may have sizzled a part of his soul, his corrupted, corrupted soul. And you were all set upon, after some time of, I believe, you discovered everything that was in the room, actually. You had a very good perception roll. If you will remember, there were three items that you found inside the room, in addition to the many, many, many dead Dawi that were encased in a kind of um, metal. You found a scroll, a parchment of a kind. You also found a skull that was a brilliant red color and was apparently still moist and dripping. And had an interesting set of horns on the side of its head. You also found a green gem that was lodged inside the, um, the forehead of one of these um, dwarven statues. But before you could do too much, um, I believe Marius, you opened up your book Seeking Guidance. Which then removed itself from your hand and ate said parchment paper. You quickly gathered up the book, closed it, and stowed it. Just in time for the door behind you, the main entrance that was being besieged, 
by a group of chaos dwarves, probably on behest of someone or something in this hold, blew through the door and set upon the lot of you. A very vicious fight ensued where one Bragadine Bono held his ground against a mighty, mighty ogre with the help of his friends. Marius lost a pick, but found another. A rather impressive work of dwarven craftsmanship. Oh, yeah, bro. <laughs> <laughs> and one Seamus McCready used his rather um, devastating and possibly overpowered weapon, um, his Thunderer. But in the process, may have lost his repeater crossbow. Mm. And that should bring us about up to speed, guys, unless you can think of anything else. Mm. Nope. So, I don't think so. With that, then, let's just delve into it, guys. So, um, I want all of you guys to roll me initiative. As the last thing you noticed, the last thing you saw, was the last remaining Chaos Dwarf decided to flee at the um, sight of all of his fellows being butchered and murdered rather viciously by Coward. all of you. He did. He was cowardly and was running. But as he was running through the entrance, the demonic engine, the machine that has been spraying molten metal across this tomb, um, managed to break free of its shackles. And I will remind you that the machine itself is rather large. The barrel is gaping and massive, almost like a cannon. And it has two large bull-like horns on the side of it. There's a extremely disturbing glow coming from within. It has um, four trunk-like legs and that you did not see move. That does not mean they might not be capable of movement. Um, but it also has an opening above it um, on what would be its back if it was a living creature. Maybe it is a living creature. Um, that is open and disgorging um, heat and this liquid-like metal. That is where the ogres were feeding it. Um, so yes, as the Chaos Dwarf, the Dawizar, was running away, the barrel itself managed to lurch downwards, and through some act of foul sorcery, um, sucked the skin off said dwarf and then just devoured him completely as he became one with the machine, fed to the demon within. And it was beginning to pulse rather rapidly. So what did we roll for initiative? Seamus got a six. Six. All right. Marius rolled a twelve. Twelve, okay. And <laughs> Bragadine? Bragadine rolled a ten. A 10. Okay. So, um, currently, you guys all have the same health. We're technically still in combat up until something happens. Um, I will say this. Um, Marius, go mm -hmm. ahead and, well, you know, I'm just going to give it to all of you guys. You all, you've already looked... And you see that the entrance, you, you, can, you guys can all tell easily, the entrance, this massive hole, this door that has been blasted through, this engine has actually scooted itself into the hole. Um, there is liquid metal running down its back and dripping onto the floor. And it's beginning to pool and coalesce and push itself into the vault. And so there may or may not be a time limit on what all is happening right now. So just to give you a little food for thought here. Time is of the essence. You are free to do as you wish, Marius Wolf. Oh, all right. So um, I guess is my action. Um, I'm not going to like run up to attack it, but I'd, I'd like to take a, a look-see around to see if I can find um, anything that's peculiar that might be a exit of some sort okay. um specifically the way we got in i know 
uh, the wall has now is now flush. Yes. Again, with a secret passage, but okay. Maybe I can see a seam or something. Yeah, go ahead and give me a perception check. Okay. That is a six out of fifty-four. Very, nice. very good. So. Good start. Good start. With that good of a perception check, let me make sure I. I yep. Yeah, okay. Yeah, you actually see quite a bit. So, Marius, um, I believe you were standing over a. Were you over a dead dwarf, or you did you just kill the ogre? I'm over a dwarf right now. Yeah, that's right. You killed the yeah, the last one. You killed was the Dawizar. Um, you're standing over this dwarf, and you begin glancing about, looking quickly for an exit, and you noticed something. Um, as you're glancing around the room frantically. You can see some markings on the wall that you came that you think you came through. You specifically have good eyes, better eyes than the rest of this lot for this kind of architecture. Being one that's very familiar with underground places and the dwarven mines and whatnot. And you think you see a patch of wall that doesn't have as much soot and damage upon it as the rest. And there might be something a little bit different. And there's a panel. Um, it's about a six by six panel. and Or six by four panel, excuse me. Um, that you think is the entrance that you came through. In addition to that, Marius, you also glance over near Seamus McCready, who is not doing so hot at the moment, but he's standing. And you see at Seamus' feet that red skull that was blown out of your grasp when the door exploded behind you. There's a little bit of molten metal clinging to it that is fastly cooling, but it appears to be unharmed, and it is almost a foot from Seamus. Okay. So that's what you see. Um, you have your cool. reaction and your movement. Um, I guess I'd like to um, move over to the 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 scene the the six by four okay. segment of wall. Okay, yeah, you can um, easily make your way over to it. Um, and I'm assuming I can't do anything to not this turn, not but this you turn. can okay. at least make your way over to it. And you still have a free action if you want to say anything to anyone. My free action, I'll probably tell. Seamus, the skull. Be careful. And uh, that's, that's, that's all I'll say. Okay. <laughs> all right. That ends Marius Wolf's turn, which brings us to one Bragadine Beno. Mr. Beno, right. you see all this right. this heinous device begin to grow even brighter. What are you doing? Where is it? In comparison to where Seamus and Mary sit. You are, are the you are the closest to the creature, the demon engine. Um, you can see quickly that the pooling magma is approaching. Marius and Seamus are behind you. Um, Marius is actually by the wall behind you now, about 15, 20 feet behind you. How far away is Seamus? Seamus is further back than that. He's going to be a, probably another ten or fifteen feet past that, and you you have a you have a decent view of him with all of the light being shed by this creature, so you could make him out in the distance. All right, um, I want to take a really good look at the uh, the machine and see if just around it to see if there's any way we can squeeze through it. First, okay, just kind of like yeah. Okay, go ahead and give me a perception test. That's right. a 36 out of 49. Okay, so, all right, that is, that is a level of success. You... Glancing towards the, where the machine is, and you can see that it's the ground around it is now a molten just ooze of liquid metal. Okay. 
Um, so you don't think the ground would be a um, definitely a, a place that you should be walking. Now, if you could come up with some other means of traversal, possibly. There's definitely space above the, the creature if you could somehow get above it. Um, where the massive hole has given way and big pieces of the door have crumbled inside. Okay, like rubble around the... Uh, okay. All right, so there's piles of rubble around actually where it's There are in. piles of rubble. Um, maybe. It would, it would be a stretch. Um, maybe someone with a healthy leg could make the jump. Mm, uh, no, I'm aware um, of that. I'm a food for thought. Okay. So, All right. I want to take a look at the machine. I'm not very bright. Is there is because I, I seem to remember there's a bunch of monsters and, and night and, and and right outside the door too. There were things approaching um, when the door closed uh, beside you guys after the bright flash. You guys have no now no none of you know exactly what happened to Seamus. Seamus probably doesn't even realize exactly, but something happened when he passed over those runes and set something off, maybe sliding the door in place. Okay, I just remember that there was uh, the ogres were actually putting things in bodies. Oh yes, you like would you would remember up. that. And yes, there was other monsters definitely. out there. So I, even if I were to dash out, I would have to fight a uh, hundred monsters. I'm going to run to Seamus as okay. fast as possible with my hurt leg. Okay, you move twenty feet. You don't quite get to him. <laughs> you pass Marius on your left. Um, you still have your free action if you want to say anything. And, to and anyone. My free action will be like. Gentlemen, we cannot go out that way. We have to find a, another place. That's it. All right. And that brings us to one Seamus McCready. Yes. What would you like to do? Um, can I see if Beno has, like, a bag on him? Um, but no one doesn't have much of anything on him. He, he basically has only picked up what he's got. Since you've picked, since you saved him, essentially he didn't I have, have much of bag. anything. Yeah, he I he might have a, a small bag. I will like say a this: bag. Th this skull is a pretty decent size. It's bigger oh. than your average human skull. I will not carry your cursed object. Uh, well, I'd like to get a bag to put this in, but it ain't gonna fit in one. Um, and Marius is. Go ahead. Marius is like playing around with the wall, correct? He's yeah. He's currently looking at the wall, looking to possibly try to um, get you guys out of here safely. Um, could I possibly like reach him and assist in that? You could. Are you going to leave the skull? I don't want to touch it. I don't have anything that can pick it up. So, um, go ahead and give me an intelligence test, Seamus. Okay. Um, that is a. It's gonna be close. It's a fifty out of uh, forty-one. Okay, it's a fail. Do you want to re-roll it? Do you want to make it a success? Uh, yeah. Let's just make it a success. Okay. So you spend a fortune, make it a success. Successful intelligence roll. Um, you glance down at it, Seamus, at the skull, and you think. Out of character, mechanically speaking, from DM to player, mm -hmm. Seamus may have a natural resistance to the influence of actual chaos itself mm. for a short amount of time, if need be, true. in addition to possibly maybe you could use your action to look for something to wrap it up with. Instead of just a just a bag on, on uh, Mister Beno. Yeah, yeah, yeah. If you allow, then I like to use my yeah, action yeah. to look for. Yeah, Go ahead, to and you can either give me a intuition test, or okay. you can sell me on something else. If you have any skills that are a little bit better than that. Mm. The only thing I have better is going to be like outdoor survival and perception. I I will give you outdoor survival. I'll give you that. All right, let's do it. That is, let's see, settles a 37 out of 46. Okay, 
So basically what you do, Seamus, is you glance around and you're not seeing much in the way of some kind of material, some kind of cloth to cover this thing with. But as you're glancing around, you notice that some of the molten slag that had covered you recently has hardened and sloughed off. And there's actually is a piece, almost like a bowl, that has formed of metal. And you reach down and um, kind of hammer at it with the butt of your very, very large <laughs> rifle and splinter yes. it free. And you have a decent bowl that you might be able to scoop the skull up in and hopefully not have it touch your body in the process. <laughs> So I will right. give you that. There may be a check involved when transporting said skull, but you will have it like that. So you have it scooped up for now. Would you like to move? Uh, yes, I'll probably move a little closer to uh, Marius just in case something happens. Okay. All right. And it is going to require um, two hands to kind of hold this. So just keep yeah. that in mind. All right, so that brings us to the end of the round, which brings us to the top of the round, actually. With the Demon Engine, all of you feel a wave of very, very, very hot air just begin to radiate off of this machine, and you can feel it from the distance you're at in addition to anything else you felt before. And all of you see as, um, well, Marius, you're the closest now. So Marius, you instinctively glance over your shoulder and you glance back at the, the cannon portion, the actual mouth of it. And you see that there is this, where there was like this broiling liquid kind of molten magma looking on the inside of it. Now there are two large sets of eyes. And you see the metal is actually beginning to flex and crack around the barrel itself. What? And you see five digits of one disgusting hand that's made of just liquid metal sh peel itself out of the barrel and is trying to peel away the metal like a banana as a head is beginning to emerge. Um... Yeah. That is all it can do currently. <laughs> Mary Swolf, it is your turn. <laughs> I'm frantically trying to figure out this door. <laughs> okay. As this begins to happen, um, I need all of you guys to make me cool tests. Okay. I rolled a 40 out of 60. 40 out of 60. So, Marius Wolf, you not only keep your cool, but you do not take any corruption from this site. Ooh. Seamus, you have a natural resistance, so technically your roll is fine. Yes. Um, for corruption, but what did you, did you uh, fail for the fear? I got a 34 out of 44. Okay, so you're fine. You're fine then. A level of success is good enough currently until it emerges fully. Um, Bragadine, how did you do? Bragadine is still under the influence of the blessings of the lady. And uh -huh. he rolled a 37 out of 60. Out of si Oh, very good. You have very good cool. Damn. Okay. So you even seeing the sight, something, you, you harden yourself. I mean, you just slew a mighty ogre, something twice your size. <laughs> and you, you still feel emboldened. Um, and yeah, you don't take any corruption either. So good, 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 good all around. So Marius, you're free to take your turn as you will. Yeah, so I'm, I'm trying to figure out how to get into this door. Okay, make um, me an intuition test, Marius. Okay. Uh, it's a 31 out of 37. Okay. So that's barely a success. 
So yeah. you, you at this point you've made out the edges of the the door, mm -hmm. the mechanism. You can see it now. Um, the rest of you, it just kind of looks like Mary's is plotting against the wall. You're not sure what's there. You hope it's the way out. Um, you see the seams, Marius, and you're fiddling around with them, and you're not seeing anything that can let you out. You're, you're, you're pushing on different places on the door, and you don't see any mechanism. Would you like to yeah. do anything else? You still have your free action any... and your movement. Is there any give to it? There is no all? give. It is solid. No give? Very solid. solid. Okay. Um, and with my perception check earlier, I didn't see any other kind of avenues of escape. You would only see the possible treacherous climb that I mentioned with Bragadine um, to Bragadine, attempt to okay. jump over said uh, demon engine. Um, but that was also before whatever is trying to emerge from it. So sure. there's, there's also that to think about. Well, I guess I'm just like uh, still, still going to try to figure, fiddle around this door. Okay. Uh, Possibly you know. one success may or may not have been enough is what I'm getting yeah. at. This may be an extended yeah. test. Okay. Okay. Um, I'll probably just as my free action be like, gentlemen, we need to leave. <laughs> <laughs> and that brings me to Bragadine. It is now your turn, good sir. Bragg at the end, runs over to the Seamus, makes it to the Seam to Seamus. Yes. Checks on him. Are you okay? I thought Seamus is actually pretty hurt. He is pretty hurt. Yeah, I'm I'm yeah. hurting too, but I thought he got he's pretty hurt. So basically I just want to check on him, kind of help him stand up, basically lift him up to see mm -hmm. if there's anything I can do. I don't have the heel skill though. You do not. No. You can do nothing. No. You, can, right. well, you, can, case, you can help him case, if you, I'm you, you just help you can give him moral support <laughs> all right okay let me let me change it so i'll run over to seamus uh-huh i want to look around my free action is going to be wait a second gentlemen there was a key the dwarf used the key the room the, the the slab is there one in here and i want to look around to see if there's anything that we that that might appear to be a key or something similar okay looking for a key all right um go ahead and give me an intuition test oh man i really need a oh that's a 60 um it's a fail and that's a <laughs> 22 I'm, I'm not the brightest man <laughs> okay do you want to re-roll it you want to just let it go i'm gonna let it go yeah. okay all right so you begin glancing around a you can tell that time is of the essence um, and you're not seeing any, anything that you think like that, that stone with that rune upon it. You're not seeing it anywhere. Would you like to possibly move towards the door that Marius is fiddling with? Yes. Yes. Okay. If I can, if that's still within my movement range, yes. I'll say you, you can get close, but not to it because of your limited range of movement currently. Okay. Perfect. And that will be the end of your turn. So Seamus. End of the round. What would you like to do? Uh, seeing Beno head towards that door, I will carry the skull over to that where Mar Marius is as well. Okay. Mm -hmm. And probably in somewhat of a rushed, panic state, mm -hmm. tell Marius to, uh, uh, gentlemen, you better find a way out of this room before we get killed off by this fucking thing coming for us. And if possible, you know, maybe at least with my eyes try to find a thing since I'm holding the skull in my hands. Yeah. You can, I will allow you to give me an intuition test. We, ooh, 40, that's a failure as well. All that right. 47 out of 41. Yep. Um, you can make it a success if you like. Uh, yes, we will. Since, uh, okay. I'm, I'm hoping once. This time is up. Yeah. So that makes this two total successes. So you see Seamus kind of glancing over your shoulder, Marius, and he points out um, a, a slight divot in a piece of the door. And you're, you're kind of, it piques your interest. You're like, okay. 
and you are one step closer to possibly opening this. Um, that's the end of the round. At this point, um, Seamus, after pointing that out, you glance back towards the creature that is quickly emerging from the <laughs> mouth of the cannon and a second five digits of another clawed hand comes to the lip of the cannon what? and successfully this time peels back the metal as it cracks and you hear this sickening pop as a head and hands emerge from the mouth of the demon engine and it is just this disgusting dripping mass of molten metal that has a face and long fangs and dripping saliva and it looks at the three of you and lets out a blood curdling roar i need all of you guys to make me cool mm. test once again Huh? Oh man, the DC may be a lot higher this time, guys. Oh, That's cool with me. Oh, no. Well, we did so, not. Marius, Marius, how'd we do? I rolled a 41 out of 60. All right, Marius. What are you going to do, bro? You can either spend a fortune point. Ooh. To give yourself one more success level, or possibly re-roll. Okay. Or, Marius Wolf may take his first point of corruption. All right. Uh, I'll 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 take a I'll take a fortune. You said is it enough if I? Yeah, if you just said... spend one, you have to have three levels of success. Okay. Then yeah, I'll I'll, okay. I'll spend one more. You spend one, and you stave off the worst of it. Seamus, how did we do? This time, I will say, with your resistance, um, the DC is not as high for you. So what did Ooh. you get? I got a 13 out of 44. Okay. That actually would have been enough anyway. No, it wouldn't have. It would, it would have. Yeah, it would have. It would have been enough anyway, but you you don't you didn't need as much because of your uh, chaotic resistance. So you're good, Bragadine. How did we so, do? Bragadine failed that. So we're gonna burn a fortune. <laughs> yeah, hold on. Okay. So oh, you're rolling. Oh, oh yeah, yeah. And we're glad we did because we rolled. So we rolled sixty four out of sixty first okay. time. That fortune point got us a two out of sixty. Oh, okay. That's Easily. It. All right. Once again, Bragadine, man, putting on a show. Got it. So you also, Bragatine, managed to steal your mind from possibly cracking and um, possibly planting the first seed of dark thoughts that may have spiraled out of control. But you That's my devotion to, to the lady. Exactly. Devotion to the lady. Put it out of, out of sight, out of mind as you close your eyes and probably whimper and begin to look away. Oh, please. And at that, mm. at the top of this round, let's see here. Let me roll for it because this thing is coming out. But before it does, is it all the way out, it is getting it's it's on it's almost about to pull itself free. Okay. But Marius, as it's about to happen, as this creature yells at you, you with your with your multiple success levels. You feel something happening with the doorway itself. And let's see here. Bragadine, you would hear it because of your heightened sense of hearing. We hear someone say, Get back! Bragadine hears him. The rest of you kind of, it sounds muffled, but you hear a noise on the other side of the door. What would you like to do, Marius? I guess if I hear it, then you I would hear up, you I... would hear like just a muffled noise, but you would hear All something right. on the other side. Okay, uh, I guess I'd back up then if you allow me to back up. <laughs> yeah. Oh know. yeah. Yeah. You begin to to back away from the door. Are the rest of you going to do uh, the same for the sake of brevity? Yes. Yeah. I heard it say get back. Okay. All right. Sure. So you begin to back away from the door. And it is, so that would be your guys' turn. 
<laughs> at the bottom yeah. of the turn, however, um, there is a cacophonous boom as the doorway um, explodes inwards and chunks of rock come flying past the lot of you. Um, I'm not going to make you guys make dodge checks since we heard everything and managed to get away. And there is a figure standing on the other side of the now vacant hole in the wall. A very stout looking dwarf with a feathered cape. Um, who's got his hand not outstretched into the hole, but he's, come quick! And that is all he can do. So, Drogor may or may not have come to your rescue here. <laughs> yeah. It's about time. About but time, Drogor. before that, we have a bit of a skill challenge, boys, to escape from the demon. Oh. So, Marius, you glance over, and as this happens, the boom happens, you shelter your eyes, and you glance up, and you see Drogor's form standing through there, standing through the open hole. The demon roars once more and completely peels the barrel off of him. And this, like, long, spindly, skeletal form spills out onto the ground and stands. And as it does, a wave of heat bursts off of it. I need everyone to make me endurance checks. All right. Marius rolled a um, 35 out of 60. 35 out of 60? Okay. Marius, you feel a wave of almost nausea overtake you, but you hold it together. Beads of sweat begin to pool on your forehead. You are fine. Seamus. Seamus got a 54 out of 65. Oh, and aren't you aren't you have a level of exhaustion? Oh, I do. So that would be a 54 out of 55. Okay, so that's barely a success. But Ooh. you hold it together. You are not looking as good as Marius. Your next test might be a little bit harder. Um, Ragadine. Are. Bragadine the Bold, you may call me now. Oh, Bold A, 15 oh out of 52. Okay, man, you've got good endurance. God, okay, good, good, very good. Um, Bragadine, likewise, similar to Marius, you strive off, stave off the worst of it. But there's just this wave, and you guys ha kind of have to shield your eyes from the, the bright heat and the bright light coming off of it. And Marius, it is, you're going to be first up since you're first in the initiative order. You have a chance to make a bolt for the open door. Okay. Um, what do you I can, roll? You can either, you can either make a, so here's basically what this is. You see this creature emerge and it looks like it is going to bear down on the slowest upon you. <laughs> you have a choice. Oh no. <laughs> you have a choice, Marius. You could bolt for the door easily enough. Mm -hmm. Or probably get in the balling now. Or you could attempt to stave off the inevitable end somehow, some way. The choice is yours. Okay. I guess what I'll do is um, I'll I'll stand by the door and kind of usher the other two guys in, the party members in. Okay, so you'll just be standing and, by the door and, and and essentially wait to try to help them in. Yeah. Um, okay. And just try to assist them in if I if I can. Yes, um, I will. Uh, yeah. So your your check will come in a moment. Then at this point. So okay. you move you move to the open hole. Um, Drogor is on the other side. It's it's a about a foot or two deep. This this piece of wall was it was significant. Um, significant force was used to burst it open. But you put your back to the hole and look back at your companions. 
Um, Bragadine, you are next up, and Bragadine, you are at half speed. Um, your ankle is still throbbing in pain. If you want to get a burst of speed, Bragadine, I'm going to need you to make me an athletics check. How far away am I? Well, I need at to put minus on a burst of speed. 10. Because of your wounded ankle. Alright. Um, Bragadine is going to do his best. Do his best. That's all you can yeah, do. That is not a good characteristic for me. Oh, hell yeah. Um, can we <laughs> can we write this? No. It would. I had to beat a 23. Yeah. I rolled 11. Ooh, a critical oh, success. Right. Critical sex. It's a critical success. Yeah. So, Bragadine, it must be the fear. Your adrenaline's going. It just goes full throttle, and you see Marius turn, obviously waiting for you, <laughs> thinking that you're going to fall behind. This demon's going to set itself upon you, and something overcomes you. Perhaps it is the will of the lady, and a pep enters your step and you forget about your ankle momentarily and with a burst of speed you easily um sprint your way past some of the over some of the rubble and through the open door and you are out of the vault which leaves us with one seamus mccready yeah i'm gonna need you to make me that athletics test seamus at minus 10. all right uh, all right, so that is a seven out of twenty-seven. Okay, all right. Um, because of your barely success with the endurance check, that is enough to get you moving. But there's going to be a complication. Oh. As you're about halfway, you begin moving after Beno, and Beno just puts on like a burst of speed, and it's very uncharacteristic of him. And he is just through the door before you can almost blink. And you get about halfway there, and you're kind of picking yourself up over the rubble, and you're you're hurt. You're hurt. You took a lot of damage in this fight. And the creature is going to attempt to make a swipe at you with its molten hand. Mm. Not and as it does, good. as it does, Marius, you have the opportunity to either distract it or perhaps move to intercept and pull Seamus through at possibly the cost of your own life. Oh. The choice is yours, Marius Wolf. The choice is yours. Um, Marius would probably try to intercept and try to save Seamus. Okay, how are you going to do this? It is. A, it lets out this piercing shriek and begins charging, and it looks like it has just enough reach to where its talons are probably going to take Seamus through the throat. <laughs> I guess I would try to uh, run. Uh, mm -hmm. And either push him out of the way or yank him out of the way, and then try to, if I can, block with my pick. Okay. Um. All right. How about this? We will give you. You know what? Go ahead and give me a melee attack. A melee Harris. attack. Yeah, your okay. your two handed pick, the works. Okay. I don't know if this is going to be good or bad. Uh, I rolled a 70 out of 70, which technically that is, a is That's a critical success. Okay. <laughs> it is. It is. Um, okay. That's what's having such a high skill is good for. <laughs> so, yeah. um, wow. Critical success. Um, all right. Uh, Seamus, you feel heat. And you glance over, you just glance to your left, and you can see that this giant behemoth beast, which now that it's pulled itself free, it is about 15 feet tall. It is spindly, and it its limbs don't look very thick, and it's dripping in this wet, 
just burning magma, like metal, that is cooling in droplets around it. And you see just these giant, almost sword-like fingers that are reaching for your throat. And as it begins to close, Seamus, you just see something in its eyes. And you hear a whisper in your ear. Skulls for my throne. <laughs> but before it can clasp around your throat, oh, good doom, Ma bro. Marius Wolf charges past you and brings his pick against something that appears to be made of liquid magma. Seamus, you manage to stumble past and you are free. You are out of the vault. But Marius Wolf, you smack into the outstretched hand and you are expecting to be engulfed inside this liquid metal. But for some reason, not only does it not happen, but when your pick connects with its hand, it cries out and flinches away as the runes along the haft of the pick begin glowing even brighter, a brighter red. And you see that the arm that you touched with it, just the hand melts away and there's just a stub of an arm and it squeals and backs away from you. What would you like to do, Marius Wolf? Get the fuck out of here. Okay, go ahead and make <laughs> me a... So you're going to have to make me a dodge, Marius. I will give you uh, okay. a point of momentum. Okay. So I go ahead and it. give me a dodge as it is going to attempt to swipe out of you with its other hand. Okay. Dodge just agility, right? Yes. Okay. That's a 21 out of 36. Oof. Marius, Marius, Marius. One Not level of success, dodgy. Marius. You, you wound the creature and you turn your back on it and you're oh. you're almost mid-leap and you feel claws rake across your back. Ah. It digs in you. Ah! A bright flash of light and you hear the thing cry out behind you as well. Oof, you take 16 wounds. <laughs> Whoa. That, you, that you can reduce with your toughness okay and you have two flaming conditions as your body flies through the open hole and bounces into the hallway okay you're currently Am on I... fire there is liquid metal <laughs> stuck to your body <laughs> okay um so i'm Am I out of the, the room now? You are out of the vault, but okay. you are on fire. Okay. And I'm unconscious. You're unconscious? Yeah, because I, I have the, five uh, toughness, and so that would be 11 damage. Yep. And so I I'm, I'm, I had 11 health. And so, okay, so it dropped you to exactly zero? Exactly zero, yeah. Okay, if that's the case... Well, plus, plus the fire conditions, which I'm assuming will <laughs> damage me next turn. They will. So. Um, unless somebody does something about that, but because it didn't go past zero, you don't take an automatic critical wound. So you okay. just fall, you just fall and technically you're not unconscious. You are prone and unable to move currently. Um, okay. at this point it is actually Drogor's turn as you <laughs> come flying through the hole. He's like, ah, oh! and he'll, um, reach down. And with a flick of his wrist, Marius, and Seamus and um, Bono, you see it as well. He doesn't actually touch Marius. He flicks his hand above him, and where he does, it's almost like a force. Brushes away the liquid magma off of his body, and it flings to the side so you can remove your burning conditions, Marius. Whew. So, and as he does, he reaches down to pick you up to steady you. And, um, Marius, you have resolve points. If you use one resolve point, you can automatically recover one wound when you're at zero. 
Okay, I'll do so then. Okay, so you are at one wound currently. So you managed okay. to get your feet under you, but you are severely hurt. Yeah. All of you are. And it's at this point that Drogor um, glances around. We must go! Now! Follow me! And he's going to attempt to lead you guys away. Unless right. we're doing otherwise. No, I'm probably following. <laughs> yeah. Lead the way. Not, not going back in there. Okay. So, and you hear this, this ear-piercing screech come from the vault itself. And... Um, if anybody glances back over their shoulder, they'll notice that the beast, the creature, is trying to shove itself through the opening, and something is keeping it from getting all the way through. Um, you're not sure what it is. It's obviously the hole's big enough for it to squeeze itself through, but something is keeping it in place. It's kind of strange. Like, its head bobs in and out. But that's all you guys can tell as you begin walking off into the, well, stumbling off into the distance. <laughs> and you're hearing hooting and hollering. And it sounds like there is a large amount of people or creatures coming this way after all of the um, noise that was made. In addition to that, um, the three of you would notice that Drogor looks tattered. His feathers are singed, and his armor looks like it's definitely seen some recent use. As well as his axe is glowing, almost um, almost like it was fresh from the forge. The blade looks like that. And there are these tiny runes across the blade that weren't there before, that are picked out, that look like they're fresh. And as he begins leading you off, you stumble around a corner and you see just a bloody viscera of what used to be a group of chaos cultists and beastmen. There are 12 corpses in all, and they have been ripped to pieces and scorched and burned. Some of them are missing multiple limbs, and it is just, it looks like the walls have been painted with blood. In this tunnel. And Drogor leads you through. It's at this point. I'm assuming you guys are looking for a place to rest. Uh, where are you I'm leading just, this? You know? Just trying to keep up. <laughs> You're just trying yeah, to keep yeah. up. And, yeah, and I will say this. I'm giving it to you because of your critical success. Um, Mr. Bono. Normally you would be flagging behind significantly. But now we enter our second skill challenge of the night, boys. As Drogor has led you through what was his last stand, um, what has kept him busy while you guys were in the vault. And he glances about. Hi, they're coming. Let's move. Everyone, make me athletics tests. Minus 10 for Seamus. Minus 10 for Mr. Bracketing. <laughs> well, Seamus rolled with the minus 10, a 20 out of 27. Good, very good. Okay, so a pass, a pass. Very good. Um, well, Marius? Marius rolled a 23 out of 26. Okay, Marius, you're stumbling, but but still standing. Shame, okay. um, Bracketing. All right, I rolled a 42 out of... Are you said a minus 10? You're at a minus 10 currently. Oh, man, I only have one fortunate point left. I don't... <sighs> the odds aren't good, but let's try it. I'll use, I'll use my other fortune point. Okay. And... It's a 28 out of 23. Out of 23. Yep. You begin, Bragadine's beginning to lose momentum. The adrenaline is starting to wear off. Um, he's slowly stumbling behind. But don't he's still me. with you. He's still with you. <laughs> As he calls out to you, don't leave me. Marius, you glance over your shoulder, and you're all pretty badly hurt. Even Drogor doesn't look that great. <laughs> and... Uh. 
we make it to the next section of tunnel as he's ducking and but he's moving very quickly guiding you through almost like a maze of side tunnels um i need everyone to make me perception tests Uh, Marius rolled a 34 out of 54. Very good, Marius. Um, Seamus? Uh, With a minus 10, I got a 43 out of 41. Okay. Do you have any fortune left? I have... I have two left. Hey, do you want to use one or do you want to let it ride? Or you can, you can, you, you know, you can just make it a success as well. Uh, I will let it ride so I can hopefully keep two for. Okay. Part, part two. <laughs> All right. Bragadine, how did we do on our perception test? Bragadine needed this roll earlier because we rolled a six out of 49. Okay, very good. So Bragadine. You, at this point, you guys notice that the um, the the kind of side tunnels that you'd be going through, there's apparently a vast amount of webbing through this particular tunnel. It looks very, very familiar. Oh. Seamus, oh, no. Marius, even Bragadine, very, very familiar. And it is sticky and moist, and it is clinging to the walls in particular, and the ceiling. The floor has patches of it. And Marius and Drogor easily pass through, as well as Bragadine. Um, this time, Bragadine, you actually catch up. You manage to to kind of maneuver enough to catch up with those, uh, with those of your patriots. But Seamus, however, steps, and his foot... <laughs> sticks into a patch of webbing and he uh, 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 and as he does the two of you glance back and see that Seamus is stuck and you're seeing further down the hallway closing very quickly you see torchlight and the calls and brays of beastmen what would you guys like to do We'll start with Marius Wolf since you're a first initiative order. Leave him. <laughs> yes. <laughs> no, 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 no. Lie. <laughs> Lie. <laughs> uh, Marius would leave him, so he'd, he'd uh, try to go help him. Okay. You move to help him, Marius. Um, I'm assuming you're just going to try to pull him free. Probably. Give me a strength check. All right. Deadling. Uh, a 39 out of 60. Okay. You pull. You get most of his foot free. You, He's still attached. Okay. But he, you're beginning to free him. Okay. It's now Bragadine's turn. What would you like to do, Mr. Bragadine? Do we have torches? I would I would assume that on this in this rush you have not lit torches. Okay. You have been in a mad dash. So it is dark. There's low light from some of the glowing runes that decorate most of this hall. Um so there is basic light but nothing to that that's one of the reasons why your perception test needed to be decent. All right. Um I'm going to run back and uh we must get you out, Seamus. You have definitely proved yourself to be a man of noble worth and bravery. Mm -hmm. And try to <laughs> cut him free. You're going to cut it? Yeah. Okay, make me a melee make a swing attack. swing at it. Yeah, with your, since okay. you have a, a sword, this will be, mm -hmm. that, that is a viable option. Please critically fail. Yeah, it's not a critical fail. <laughs> Break your neck. Uh, you guys better be glad I put points in this advance. So, um, let's see, 47, 56. I rolled a 46 uh, under 56. Okay, so that's a degree of success. Okay, so you hack into the webbing and it frees itself a little more. It's still clinging to Seamus's boot. 
that's still stuck to his leg. But he's almost free. Seamus McCready, it is your turn. Uh, can I, like myself, try to wiggle free? or Sure. Go well, and make you know me a strength what? check. No, because that's just a minus 10 and it's just going to suck. Um, it is. <laughs> Can would there be a way for me to pull the sword out to cut it, or am I gonna get like my arm stuck? I will. I will allow you to um, make a melee attack with okay. your sword. You draw it quick enough and slice down. Hopefully, not slicing your foot off in the process. Uh, no, I'm skilled. Um, I'm assuming it's a minus ten as well. It so is. That's going to be. Ooh, yeah, a seventeen out of forty-five. Okay, good. So this time, however, with the aid of Mary, and Marius is still pulling on you. You, it's not, it's not pretty because of the, the awkward angle, but you manage to slice down, and as you do, you cut through the last of the webbing. But unfortunately, as you have this small victory, as your leg pulls free, Seamus. Time might have been of, of the essence, as you see brimming around the quarter you came from, the faces of cultists and beastmen, many, many chaos worshippers beginning to funnel into the tunnel behind you. And as this happens, it is Drogor's turn, since you guys all... <laughs> Since Seamus held you back and allowed them to yeah, catch up, Jorgor is going to rush up to the three of you. And he looks to you, Marius, and he says, Boy, take them further in. Make a left. I'll lead them away. But before he does, he says, Give me those. And he points towards the balls, the glass orbs that you have, Marius. Oh, I like oh, those. Gee. He's pointing towards him. <laughs> yeah. All right. Um, I'll hand him to him. Okay. No. You hand him the sack. He takes it in one hand easily. And then he looks okay. to Seamus. Seamus. The skull. And he reaches his hand out. Uh, take it. It's yours. You dump the skull into his hand. He begins to look back. As he does, um, all of you guys give me intuition tests. Okay. <laughs> oh, I failed miserably. I okay. Did too. Uh, I'm expecting Raggedy? to. Oh man, that's uh. Um, I failed. Eighty-five out of twenty-two. Okay. Does anybody want to redo their test? No, nope. I'll do it. I'll do it. I've already try. played those odds and lost, so okay. we will. Yeah, I will. I will be a stupid raggedy. Marius, Marius go ahead. Try. Go ahead, Marius. Right. Oh yeah, yeah, much better. Uh, that's a nine out of thirty-seven. Marius, you see Drogor take a few steps towards the tunnel entrance. The one where the cultists are beginning to spill through. And it's there's it, they're about 100 feet from you. And he looks to his right at what looks like a solid piece of wall. Presses his hand to it. It slides back. And as he does, Marius, he glan you just see a glance over his shoulder as he locks eyes with you. And there's just a bit of a smirk on his face. No. He ducks. He ducks through the tunnel and disappears from view. And that's where Damn. we're going to take our first break. <laughs>